Good morning, afternoon, and evening, my friends. My name is Maya the King, and my wife said I should do lunges to stay in shape. I don't know, though. That would be a big step forward. Anyway, today we're taking a look at a game just released on Steam called Crown Wars The Black Prince, a tactical turn-based RPG game. Developed by Artifact Studios and published by Nacon. Released not in early access and selling for $40. That is a lot of money, let's hope it's worth it. So, you play as one of four noble families. You get to pick which one and each has their own backstory and status buffs. Then you get to fully customize your very own banner and I love being able to do this in video games. Anyway, your family's estate was sacked by brigands or something and now you've returned with a friend of your father to help rebuild your old estate, rebuild your previously tarnished reputation, and set about ending some secret evil organization called the Order. While you will eventually join the Brotherhood of Steel! Oh, wait, wrong genre. Just the Brotherhood. Now then, as always, let's go into the good and the bad, and also, as always, let's start with the good. So, the first positive point here for me would be the sound design. The music. While not epic or grand in any sort of way, it is, you know, meant to fill the silence as background noise. And here, it does its job perfectly. I mean, it comes and goes as needed, always fits the tone, and doesn't sound awful. Good enough for me. But then you've got the sound effects and the voice acting. The voice acting, at least in my opinion, was pretty good. Many historians have recounted this war between France and England. But not all facts have been told. At the very least, it wasn't cringy or sounding faked or forced. And then you've got the sound effects. Now, there is ambiance in the game, thank goodness. It's in the background, but surprisingly the music doesn't drown it out, so you can actually hear it. The sound of metal on metal, the animal sounds, the arrows whistling through the air when you're in combat, you know, all this stuff, it all sounds very realistic, which really helps to immerse yourself. Next up for the positives is the overall gameplay design. This game is basically, well, have you ever wanted to play XCOM but with a medieval skin? Well, here you go! This game's got XCOM written all over it, from the turn-based combat, the cover mechanics, the skills, and the Overwatch, along with a fully upgradable castle and customizable units. That's right, you get your very own castle, and in this castle you can upgrade and unlock the various different sections, each with their own buffs and unique abilities they give you and they give for you and for your army. And it looks pretty cool too. You can get a church, which is where your knights go to heal, a blacksmith where you can upgrade and craft new weapons, and of course more, but I won't spoil it here. Use your imagination. And then you've got the unit customization. Just like in XCOM, you can name your little units, or in this game, they're called companions. You can change what weapons they use, what armor they use, what decorations they have, how they look, and you can even name them. Again, I love it when games like this let me do this. Just like in other games of this type, there are various different types of units. You've got Crusaders, Flayers, Gunners, I think they're called Scouts, Beastmasters, and I think there's one more. Alchemist, maybe? Each with their own unique weapons and abilities. The combat itself is about what you'd expect. It's level by level, each with a different map. It's turn-based, and each unit has a certain number of action points they can use before they're frozen in time to wait for their next turn. Each companion can use two different weapon sets, and they can switch them in the uh, in the battle, just like you would switch from a sniper rifle to a pistol in XCOM. Uh, they can hold on to accessories like healing powder or bandages or extra armor buffs or stuff like that, and some even get animal companions! It's all fun times ahead. The gist of this game is to do battle after battle gaining resources, unlocking and upgrading various facilities around your base, all while trying to figure out who attacked your family and how to make them pay. I didn't get super far in the story, because there was a lot of battles and each one takes some time, but I can pretty much guess where it's going to go from here. A secret order of evil guys and are, are behind it and now you either join up with or restart the Ancient Brotherhood to take them down and then that will be the main story of the game. So yeah, that's about all for the gameplay. Either way, it was pretty interesting to say the least. Next up for the positives is the length of estimated playtime versus each dollar spent and the replayability as well as player retention. So the game offers you four different family houses with which to try out. It offers various modes of difficulty as well. So there's a good chance there will be other decisions you'll have to make in the game later on that will choose a direction to go in. But even if there weren't, there's still some replayability here. As for estimated playtime, I think each battle in the beginning took me 15 to 20 minutes and I haven't even unlocked everything in my castle yet, not to mention there are various upgrades for each section and I haven't even encountered that evil order yet, so I definitely think there's going to be some serious playtime to this game. And since you're paying $40, you better get your money's worth in time if nothing else, and I think that's a pretty safe bet right now. And last but not least for the positives is the writing and the creativity. The game takes place during the 1400s time frame, I think, with France and England at war, the uh, the Hundred Years' War. It's fairly accurate according to my brief research, and then they added the occult and other nefarious dark forces and stuff like that to it as well. All in all, it's incredibly interesting to me. I do wish it was more fantasy, less reality, but that's my own personal, you know, opinion. I want a game like this but with magic and dragons and demons and stuff. Anyway, the point is, ooh, or Star Wars. That would be cool. 
Anyway, it's very interesting. They keep the bleak, dark kind of mood that would have been relevant around that time frame, and with all that already powerful history, they added even more to give the player something special to connect to, and give the player more motivation and dedication to immerse themselves. Although, I don't really know which side I'm on. Am I on England's side, or am I on France's side? Neither, I... I, I don't know yet. Okay, so that's all the positives I got to say about the game. Next up is the negatives, but before we get into that, make sure you don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, especially if you were entertained or at least informed. Every little bit helps and I'm super appreciative. Thank you. So, the first negative for me personally was the graphics. Now, it's not the worst looking game ever, but I've got the graphics on the highest setting and it still ended up looking like this. Look at the character models! I mean, they look pretty bad. I mean, Manor Lords had better looking character models and that was a city builder sim developed by one guy. I expected better here. Overall, there's a lack of attention to detail and a lack of color, but for the most part, the rest of it is passable, just not as good as I wanted, so just kind of a minor negative point. The next thing I want to talk about was the tutorial. It feels unfinished to me. It didn't teach me everything I needed to know, and I'm still left floundering around and wondering things. It does teach you some things, and in the beginning it does feel right, because it teaches you with little sentences, with brief but detailed information as you play the game alongside its story, which is how they should all be done. But after you get to your castle, the game's tutorials really start to dip away very quickly without giving me as much information as I require, and thus I'm kind of just going through the motions of what it previously taught me, and I just hope I'm doing something right. I still don't know everything I need to know about the gameplay, and that's kind of the game's fault. Next up for the negatives was the user interface. Now, it looks decent most of the time, but it does it doesn't really have pop-up tooltips everywhere you'd want them to be. I mean, it does in battle though. Uh, this obviously will make it hard to differentiate things and understand what's what. Now, when you want to craft things, it does tell you what it is, and there are tooltip bubbles out there. Uh, you know, but there's tooltips missing still. Uh, like, without looking it up, I had no idea which unit type was which. Uh, you have to manually go into each unit and click on them to find out what they were because all you get is a symbol. Uh, you know, some of them you can kind of figure out, like that one's got, you know, a bear head, so obviously that one's got to be something with companions. I don't really know what its name is. Oh, I got to go in and look at it to find out. It's a little annoying, and when you're organizing or looking at your troops, the user interface here also looks kind of ugly and difficult to look at as well. I don't know why, but when you're in your castle, I just don't like the UI. Combat is fine, but out of combat, it's kind of annoying and confusing to me. But that's not all. The camera controls are completely messed up, as are some controls, uh, besides those ones. A and even if you go into your options to change them, you can't change the Overwatch keybinding itself. It's W, no matter what you do. So when you want to move your screen up, you activate Overwatch every time without the ability to take that off as a keybind. To move and rotate your camera without the mouse is incredibly awkward, so you're going to want to change that as well, but then you run into other problems. Certain actions and commands being keyed to certain keys, but you unable to change them, it it's just... It's a mess. It's awful. The next negative I want to talk about is the game's stability. Now, while the game didn't actually crash on me or freeze, uh, it did have other issues. I constantly found my game stuttering, lagging, and overall just feeling rough around the edges. It felt like it could crash on me or glitch on me at any moment. In other words, it didn't feel stable to me. I've got a pretty damn good PC set up, so there's no reason on my end for it to be acting this way. And the frames kept randomly dropping as well. I know it just released, but that's no excuse in my opinion. Your game should always be at least stable before you release it. As I said, it wasn't game breaking, but it was just kind of hard to play. And last but not least, in my personal opinion, the game just felt lacking. I mean, when you play XCOM, for instance, you get cool cutscenes, character introductions with their own cutscenes, you can move around and zoom in on different rooms and see people and watch as your base gets upgraded and changes and stuff. You can even see people walking around and doing stuff at your base. You have interesting more you have more interesting cutscenes of your units getting into like their ship or landing in the mission and getting off the ship. You got air battles against alien ships and a whole other plethora of other cool shit. All of that is missing here. At least for my playthrough, I didn't encounter anything like that. Now in the beginning, when you're first introduced to the game, that stuff was there and it had my hopes up high, but it wasn't large or very cinematic. I mean, for $40, I was expecting a lot more in terms of the production and cinematic value. And then once you get into the main game, it's just kind of boring. I, I hate to say it, but it is. I mean, you go to a mission, you fight, you come home, and you don't even get to see the building that was fixed get fixed. It's just fixed now. And then you go to a mission, and you fight, and you come home, and then guess what? Same thing. Rinse and repeat as you watch an uninspired castle go from mostly ruins to a full castle. Now, I don't know, maybe it'll pick up in hour four or hour five, but for my first two hours, I just wasn't that impressed. All right, so that's all I got to say about the negatives. Now on to my final thoughts and my recommendation. Well, for my final thoughts, 
I mean, despite the negatives, I think the game is actually pretty decent. Sure, it's lacking in some ways, but it does have voice acting. It did have some cutscenes, even if they were low quality. It does have a lot in common with XCOM, which I loved, but it's different enough to still be its own game. The general gameplay is solid, and there's clearly a lot of dedication and investment in its development. So, do I think it's a bad game? No, not even close. I think it's a pretty decent game, maybe slightly above average, I think. But when you think of how XCOM Enemy Unknown and all of its amazingness came out in 2012, over 10 years ago, and then we still get games like this where they still don't have the quality or the impact of a game like that over a decade ago, and it does feel a little depressing and underwhelming. Would I recommend it? Well, I mean, if you're a fan of games like this, then sure, maybe. However, I don't think this game is worth $40. It just seems a bit too high considering how much is lacking in its impact and its overall production value. I feel like you wouldn't be getting your money's worth. But it's not a bad game, I just don't think it's worth $40. So take that as you will. If you've got the money to spare and you love games like this, then sure, go ahead and buy it. It's harmless enough and put together well enough to bring you some joy. But if you don't have the money, if you can't afford to spend that much, you're not going to miss much by passing on this one. And so, you know, wait till it goes on sale. And by then, they might have even squashed the whole stability problem and maybe even added in some new content. All right, everybody? All right, so that's all the time I got for this video. Thanks so much for watching with a special thanks to those of you who stuck around till the end. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So until then, I bid you all farewell.